Ichigo's journey towards self-actualization is a long and arduous one, as we witness him navigate through various struggles and challenges throughout the story. The outcomes of these struggles are manifested in the multitude of power-ups and forms that Ichigo acquires over the course of Bleach. In fact, some critics argue that Ichigo receives new transformations seemingly out of nowhere, which in my opinion is indicative of a complete and utter lack of attention to the material that's being read. There is a clear reason and purpose to the forms that Ichigo acquires and the powers that he possesses, with each of them not only representing his growth and development as a character, but also being representative of which pool of power that Ichigo is currently tapping into, and the influence that it has on his power set. For those of you who aren't necessarily critical of Ichigo's numerous transformations, but you are curious about the significance of his all new dual bladed Shikai state, then this discussion aims to address your questions. I'm going to be delving into every aspect of this form, starting with how Ichigo had to it, the powers that it bestows upon him, and why it may just be the most powerful version of Ichigo that we have seen in the story thus far. Before the video begins, only 12% of the people who watch my content are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe and stick around for more content just like this. Now let's get back to the topic of the video. Before I delve into Ichigo's current power, it is essential to examine its history and evolution throughout the story, as well as the forces behind it. Ichigo's powers are primarily influenced by the two distinct types of souls that live within him. The first is the enigmatic fatherly figure Odman Zangetsu, and the second is the instinct-driven in White Zangetsu. Odman Zangetsu represents the Quincy powers that are inherited from Ichigo's mother Masaki, while White Zangetsu represents the hollow powers that are also inherited from Masaki but have been merged with the Shinigami powers that Ichigo receives from Ishin. These two sides play contrasting roles in terms of Ichigo's power, and as Ichigo taps into more of his latent powers, they influence the abilities that he ends up possessing. When Ichigo first gains his true Shinigami powers after training with Urahara in chapter 64, he manifests mostly Shinigami powers, which had been heavily suppressed by Odman Zangetsu. However, due to the way that his hollow powers were merged with his Shinigami powers, drawing out one had also brought out the other. In this case, tapping into his Shinigami powers had increased the influence of White Zangetsu's hollow powers, which is why his inner hollow grows stronger as Ichigo's Shinigami powers continue to evolve. This dynamic had persisted until Ichigo had learnt how to utilize his hollow powers thanks to his training with the Vizards. He had then started using holification alongside his Bankai and slightly increasing his power and fighting capabilities. This had allowed him to defeat opponents that his Bankai alone could not overcome. However, he encountered a major obstacle when he had faced against Ukiara Sifa's despair-inducing power. Ichigo's defeat or possible death by Ukiara had created an opportunity for White Zangetsu to fully take control of of Ichigo's body, and this had resulted in the Vasto Lode transformation that many fans have come to love. Although Ichigo had never reached this level of power on his own, the fear of entering that berserker state again had weakened him and had prevented him from using his hollow powers as effectively as before. So it should come as no surprise that Ichigo had struggled against Aizen's transcendent power. He was so afraid that he had struggled to even manifest a hollow mask, resulting in him struggling to use his hollow powers during the fake Karakura Town arc. This then forces Ichigo on a profound journey into the depths of his soul, where he gains a newfound understanding of not only the two spirits that reside within him, but also himself. This newfound understanding grants him the power of the final Getsuke Tensho, which had enabled him to surpass even Aizen's seemingly incomprehensible power. This form represents the maximum potential of the Ichigo we had known since the beginning of the series. Whether if the final Getsuke Tensho form is the maximum potential of the fragment of power that Ichigo was using at the time or all of Ichigo's latent power will be discussed in a separate video, so keep an eye out for my upcoming Dangai Ichigo vs True Bankai Ichigo video, as I'm really looking forward to introducing power scaling onto this channel. When Ichigo loses his Shinigami powers following the use of the final Getsuke Tensho to defeat Aizen, the mysterious Ginjo Kugo offers him a chance to regain everything that he has lost and more. Because residual hollow power still exists within Ichigo's soul, he has the opportunity to act 
activate his own full brain powers. It was theorized that his Shinigami powers would also return as a side effect of learning full brain because his hollow and Shinigami powers were still connected. But unfortunately, we don't get to see a result of this as Ginjo steals what he believes to be all of Ichigo's full brain powers. The Shinigami then join forces and channel their spiritual energy into a custom made Zanpakuto in order to restore Ichigo's powers. The sudden return of his Shinigami powers causes them to merge with his hollow powers, which were being manifested as his full brain at the time. This is why Ichigo gains a significant power boost after regaining his Shinigami powers and he no longer needs to use his hollow mask while he is in his full brain Shikai state. This then prepares him for the intense challenges that occur during the first half of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. The events of the first Quincy invasion and the resulting struggles and casualties in the Soul Society are often discussed and for good reason. The deaths of Chojiro Sasakibe and Head Captain Yamamoto, along with multitudes of Shinigami, the critical injuries of key Gotei 13 members like Byakuya and Kimpachi, as well as the loss of Bankai of four captains. These were all the mountains of losses that were incurred by the Soul Society. However, one character who's suffering in this part of the story is often overlooked is Ichigo's. From his appearance in Hueco Mundo in chapter 488, Ichigo finds himself on a collision course with the Quincy even prior to their invasion of the Soul Society. This leads to him battling Kilge Oppi, the leader of the Wanden Reich's hunting division. After seemingly defeating Kilge, Ichigo is on his way to the Soul Society when the Sternritter uses his shrift the Jail in order to trap him in the Garganta. The cruelty of this action lies in the fact that Ichigo's cage is near the entrance of the Soul Society, with him being unable to reach his destination which is literally an arm's length away. For Ichigo who values saving others above all else, it is torturous to know that his friends and allies are being brutally attacked while he is powerless to do anything about it, trapped within Kilge's jail. He can hear the screams of the Shinigami but he is unable to offer them any support. This deeply affects Ichigo but things only get worse from here. When Ichigo finally escapes the jail and he confronts the enemy's leader who bears the face of one of his greatest allies, he discovers that he has arrived too late. The Quincy have already devastated the Soul Society and his arrival changes nothing. Ichigo is then defeated by Yuhabak but not before making a new and disturbing discovery about himself and his possible ancestry. To make matters worse, his Bankai has also been broken, leaving him powerless and uncertain of his own identity and role in the future of the story. In the midst of despair, a beacon of hope appears, quite literally falling from the sky in the form of the Zero Division, and they claim to have a way to reforge Ichigo's broken Bankai. This marks the beginning of a challenging but yet enjoyable journey through each of their cities. Eventually, Ichigo and Renji reach Oetsu Nimaya City, where they are tasked with making one of the Asuchi submit to their will. This is a necessary step required to reforge their Zanbakdo. After hours of trying, Renji is able to succeed but Ichigo fails. Nimaya offers him no sympathy and promptly sends Ichigo home, leading him back to his father Ishin. He reveals the truth of Ichigo's origin as well as his birth and the events surrounding it and the truth behind his mother's death. And with this newfound understanding, Ichigo is able to submit one of the Isuchi. They all literally bow to him as soon as he appears before them, which is a stark contrast to how they had reacted when Ichigo had first met them. Nimaya takes on the task of reforging Ichigo's Zanbakdo, which sends Ichigo into his inner world to speak with Old Man Zangetsu for one final time. Several revelations are made here during this encounter, connecting Ichigo's entire journey throughout the story. Old Man Zangetsu reveals that he represents the Quincy powers that Ichigo had inherited from his mother, not his Shinigami powers. He explains that he had wanted to prevent Ichigo from becoming a Shinigami and facing unending danger. For this reason, he had suppressed the majority of Ichigo's powers aside from a small fragment that he was unable to contain. Despite his fears, in the end, Old Man Zangetsu states that he is proud of Ichigo for never wavering in his conviction to save others, despite facing overwhelming despair several times. He relinquishes his hold on Ichigo's powers, thus allowing him to access his full potential. This results in the dual-bladed Shikai form that we see now. Bluntly speaking, this is the power that Ichigo should have had from the very beginning of the story, granting him full access to both his hollow and Quincy powers. These aspects of his power manifest in various different ways, such as his ability to use Blute Veen, or being able to use more malleable Getsuga Tenchos, or having access to top tier hollow abilities like the Grand Ray Sero, and an even greater variation of his original holification abilities. Now it remains to be seen as to what Ichigo can do now, and fans hope that the upcoming anime will offer a more 
expanded view of his current arsenal of power. Ichigo's journey to obtaining his true powers was filled with suffering and numerous struggles, which had shaped him into the hero that he is today. Now that he has finally reached his true potential, it will be fascinating to see just how powerful Ichigo can become, especially if Kubo decides to continue the story via the Hell Arc, and if the animation staff are planning on expanding any of the moments within the manga where Ichigo uses his dual-bladed Shikai powers. Now we've reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What are your thoughts on the power-ups that Ichigo experiences throughout the story? Do you think that Kubo does a good job of explaining Ichigo's power-ups in the story, or are you of the belief that his power-ups just appear out of nowhere? I look forward to reading all of your thoughts in the comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach Explained video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.